Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today I just wanted to do a little bit of an update on some orchids uh, that I have in the collection and uh, yeah, maybe something that I'm going to be doing with them later on. Uh, there's a couple of things with buds on them, so I wanted to share that with you. That's always a good thing. <laughs> As you know, if you've been following my channel for uh, a number of years, I uh, used to grow a lot more orchids and then I got this big pest infestation and uh, it, it just... It took all the joy out of it because I had so many and mealybugs and spider mites and, and scale insects. Anytime that a, a, a plant would come into bloom, the buds would blast because they would uh, get infested with, uh, with uh, uh, pests. And I could clean off the flower spike and uh, everything looked clean and then the flower would open and they'd just be loaded with mealybugs. So I don't even know how they were getting in there. So it was always a surprise, a very nasty surprise. So over the years, I've, I've uh, limited the amount of orchids that came into my collection. And as things died or, or I just tossed out because it just was way too much work, uh, it, it, my collection has, has since decreased, as you guys have known over, over watching these videos. Uh, so I'm starting to get the orchid buzz again. I'm starting to feel it. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd like to add to the collection. So maybe this summer I'm going to add some Paphiopetalums. Uh, at least one more to my um, to my collection, and uh, maybe a couple of other things. I might try a couple of other Cattleyas. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see. So I just wanted to share with you what's going on in the the few that I'm going to show you. I think there's a few more, but uh, they're not looking so great. Uh, and uh, yeah, anyway, another time we might see them if they ever come into spike. So the first one, this one is my big guy. This one is the. BLC. I know that they've all changed names now. Ugh. Anyway, this one is always going to be a BLC because that's what the tag is. Uh, uh, Lucerito de Oro Bullion. And this is usually always in bloom, but right now you can see that it is no longer in bloom, which is fine. It usually blooms two not times a year for me, usually in the spring and in the fall, uh, sometimes in the summer. So this is a rare opportunity where it's actually uh, not in uh, is it really an opportunity? I don't know what words I'm using. Um, where it's actually not in flower. Usually it has some, either a bud or whatever, but right now it's working on all kinds of new uh, growths. It's actually hanging over the pot again. And we got some new growth coming out here. And over here it's actually split the pot. We just repotted this last year. Was it last year? No, two years ago. Oh my gosh, time flies. I don't even know. Uh, so it has been filling the pot with roots. I remember there was somebody that commented when I did the repotting that uh, the pot was too deep and, and uh, the roots are shallow rooted and, and anyway, it has filled the pot and the, pot, uh, the roots are coming out the bottom and I think I'm going to have to repot this again and I might actually divide it. I might split it in two. I don't want to, I want to keep it as big as I can because I love that it's just always in bloom and if I take, if I cut it into smaller chunks and there's not as many growth points, there's not as many flower uh, possibility or uh, flowering nodes or, or uh, growths available. So I might get one flower uh, production a year, maybe two, instead of almost always in bloom. Uh, so anyway, hope that made sense. This is the plant. It's massive. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, I don't even know. It stays pretty dry in the winter time, but uh, it's, it's doing okay. It seems happy enough. Uh, the next one, this one I keep in my kitchen window. This one, I believe it's Phalaenopsis, Phalaenopsis shilleriana, I believe. I'll put the name down below. Uh, it's got one leaf that's on the way out. This one, over the years, has been cared for and then neglected and then cared for. Uh, in the last year, I have really been uh, taking care of it. Maybe the last two years, it's been up, like I said, in the, the kitchen window and for the uh, Every year it seems to get a flower spike. Uh, the flower spike doesn't seem to be getting much bigger uh, over the years. I know that some people it just multiplies and multiplies and it gets multi-branched spikes. This one has not done that yet and it's probably because of my lack of continuous care for it. Uh, I do need to repot this thing. It has been a few years. It's in a pot that uh, is pretty full of, uh, of roots. There's not much media left in it, so I'm going to do that this spring um, after it's done flowering, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. If you haven't seen these in bloom, they're a beautiful soft pink bloom. 
uh, but the the real uh, thing for this one is the leaves the leaves are so beautiful I love the mottled leaves uh, they kind of remind me of many types of paphiopetalums with the mottled leaves so this one's really beautiful I love it uh, hopefully it will continue to do well another one that I'm so surprised is blooming I don't believe this has ever bloomed in my collection uh, this one here is a pa uh, <laughs> I'm trying to say paphiopetalum, but it's not. It's a philodendron. Oh my goodness, I got so many words in my head. None of them are right. Uh, hieroglyphica. And this one here, it reminds me actually of my little uh, uh, philo phalaenopsis. I think I said uh, philodendron. <laughs> phalaenopsis, hieroglyphica. This reminds me, the flower reminds me of the phalaenopsis palins the species. This is also a species, I believe, and this is the first time it's ever bloomed. I don't think it has ever bloomed. Um, I've had this for a number of years. I'm going to say that I've had this for almost 10 years, and I have all kinds of, of flower spikes on here. Here's a spike, here's a spike, here's a spike, and I believe there's more. Uh, yeah, there's actually four flower spikes. So over the years, it produces spikes, but it doesn't do anything. This particular one, I believe it's a sequential bloomer, so I'm going to get one bloom per stem per time. As this one fades, this one should open, and then and then so on and so forth. It should just continue to bloom until it stops for a while. You don't want to take away any of the flower spikes while they're still green because there's still potential for it to bloom, just like a Cycopsis orchid. You've seen my Cycopsis over the years. Uh, that, that one has actually died right back. I've got one growth on it, one pseudobulb that has divided, but I still have one or two flower spikes that are still good. But um, as long as the, the bloom spikes are uh, green, you want to leave them on for this particular one and many of the species too. Uh, Phalaenopsis, why do I keep wanting to say philodendron? Um, so yeah, just so cool, so interesting. Look at that beauty. Oh, I hope that's coming in, and I hope that my face is hidden enough that it comes into focus. Oh, it's so beautiful. Another uh, one that's that's blooming. I think I lost the tag for this one. I'll have to search for the name of this. I know that I've done videos on it in the past. Um, this one here has been ravaged by scale insect, and I have to go into it. I should be doing it every couple of days and I should be wiping the leaves down. I've been trying to be diligent with it because now we've got a flower spike. This one is a Brassia, and the second part starts the T. I can't remember, I'll put it down below. Uh, you've, if you followed me for a while, you've seen this one in videos. This one doesn't have the really long petals. It, it has uh, just kind of short, it, it looks very Oncidium-like, but they're very, very star-like. They're very beautiful. Um, so I've been monitoring these spikes to see, or these buds to see if they have any, any, uh, mealybugs or spider mites, or not spider mites, um, scale insect on there, and I've been spraying, and I've been taking it to the sink and wiping it down, but, uh, these, the scale insect really like to go down into the crevice of the leaves, and, uh, with these guys, that could be a little bit of a problem, because if water stands in the crevice of the leaf and doesn't uh, evaporate out in a timely fashion, uh, then you start to get rot. Uh, so I have had some yellowing leaves, but that's okay, I've just cut them away. And this one this year will need to get repotted. The pot, as you can see, is bent and we've got growth coming out the side. It's pushing the pot out. Uh, so it is, it's going crazy. It's, it needs to have a, a new home and maybe I'll divide it out this one has some nice uh, nice roots starting to develop here, as does this one over on this side. So yeah, anyway, uh, this one should be really, really interesting. Hopefully I'll do a, an update video when this, this blooms. Hopefully it's not covered in scale insect. And uh, yeah, uh, again, this is my Brassia. It's, I love it. It's, it's so much fun. I've had it for a long time. Again, maybe around 10 years. And the last one here, what is it? It's the Maxillaria variabilis. This is a really cool plant for me. I love the Maxillarias. This one has a small yellow flower. And in the past, again, I've had this one maybe 10, a little bit longer years, maybe 12 years. And uh, this one here has a small, like I said, yellow flower. 
It's not fragrant like the Tenifolia. That one is like a coconutty fragrance, but this one is not, frag uh, not fragrant from what I understand or from what I remember. This one hasn't flowered in a very long time. So this one, in the next few weeks, I think, I'm going to be transplanting this. I'm going to be dividing it. Uh, I think because it is so jammed in there, like it's it's packed in there. It, the roots don't look like they're filling the pot so much. Maybe they are, I just can't see it. Um, but I think it just needs to be divided to get that oomph it needs to start blooming again. Uh, because look at, oh my gosh. It's it's not that pretty, but it, it has so much potential. And I love the, the, the maxillarias for producing their little pseudo bulb, bulbs along a, uh, a central stem. And then all the little roots will follow back along the stem into the soil. Here's, here's one here, all the little pseudo bulbs. I need to clean this up. See, you never know what you're gonna get on this channel. I don't go in and uh, zhuzh things up before I show them. As, as they are in my collection is usually how you see them. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not, not so great, but it's real. Uh, so it has all the pseudo bulbs along the, the central stem. Uh, so that's kind of cool, and I love it. This plant, again, I've had it for a really long time, and I think I just need to give it a new little home. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you enjoy that little uh, repotting when we do it. And uh, I know I'm going to enjoy it. I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a couple of pots of these. I love how grassy they are. I might actually uh, put some into some smaller pots and, and tuck them in among some planters outside for the summertime. We'll see what happens. Be creative with your plants, have fun with them, and uh, yeah, hopefully you like this little update on the orchids. I know that I don't do a lot of orchid videos, and hopefully that will change in the future uh, as, as the pest uh, situation gets a little bit better. Anyway, until next time you guys, enjoy your plants. I'd love to see updates on your orchids if you're growing orchids. Uh, post photos to the Plants and Things What's Growing page, or also tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see them, like I said. So anyway, give me some inspiration. <laughs> anyway, until next time, you guys, happy growing.